Hey everyone and welcome back to Devil Dog Off-Road. Today we're going to be fabbing up a new rear bumper. Obviously I took the stock one off and ain't going to hold up off-roading. Uh, I'm going to make it out of 2x4 rectangular tubing plus add some plates on here. And another thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to wrap it around the side here and come back towards the tire to help protect some of the sheet metal since Boss Hog's a pretty big big Jeep and a lot of sheet metal on here and a lot of body work and try to help prevent some of that body damage which I mean let's face it we all try to avoid it but it's gonna happen so I've already marked out center line a while back in anticipation for doing the rear bumper so let's get started and keep going cuz we're that much closer so stick around Now the first thing I'm doing is I'm cutting out some plate. I've got one already, I already had cut and cutting out a couple pieces more. These are going to attach to the back of the bumper, oh, I mean to the cross member on the back side of the Jeep and we'll put holes in it and our square tubing is going to come off of here, I mean our rectangular tubing that comes off of here to go to the rear is going to attach to these. So we can go ahead and tack, uh, bolt these in place and then tack the metal to this and continue building.
All right, so when I was tacking in the spaces over there, I made one mistake. You're going to make mistakes building this stuff, especially when you build it as you go. I have an idea in my head how I want to do it, and a lot of times I need to start putting stuff together. That's why I don't weld. you don't weld anything out. I don't weld anything out until it's completely done. Put some tacks. You can always break it off. The two outside plates get those spacers I cut are the 2 by 4 The middle plate, I'm actually going to cut a hole in the center here for the hitch receiver to go through both sides of this tube and into that middle plate. So I got a little ahead of myself and cut an extra piece. It's all right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I already cut the longer piece and I'm trying to beat the rain. So uh, I'm trying to film and do everything at the same time. Uh, but you know, that's the way it works when you do this kind of stuff and you work at home. But I'm going to go ahead and get this laid out and get it cut out that way I can mount the hitch receiver through there and get a length and cut the hitch receiver down to the length I need and we can keep going with the project. So let's keep going. Alright everyone, so I had a little mishap with the camera, um, but I've got the recovery points uh, plug welded and tacked on the side here, ready to go, both of them. Well, what I've done next is I went ahead and cut some plates. I'm going to mount one on the top and one on the bottom, and the bottom one I'm going to go ahead and use the plasma later and cut some holes in there, so if I want to take a trailer uh, off-roading or if I just want to take my lawnmower to get worked on uh, I can hook the chains up and go from there uh, I'm, I am going to have to go ahead and weld out the front side of this hitch receiver here that way I can adjust the plates for the weld and whatnot and be able to get to everything good and go ahead and then tack the plates on there and then I'll finish welding those later on but we're moving along it's hot out here so you know it is what it is when you're out here in this in the South Carolina humid and heat and the cameras don't want to work with you so we'll keep going and I'll try to make sure I got some better video and footage and uh, instead of uh, letting the camera overheat but that's the way it goes So, 
I've got a piece of four inch flat bar which I've laid out and and done a layout for dimple dies. I want to cover up this gap here. As you can see there's a gap. I really don't like the look of this. The original bumper came and wrapped it. So we're going to take this four inch flat bar. We're going to cut some wedges or some angle pieces to fit behind this on the top of the bumper so it's got something to lean on and structure so it's just not welded along here we're dimple die all the way across to give it some some a good look to it and add to the look of the whole Jeep and we'll cut the small pieces to go in there once some dimple dies are in and we can lay them out across the bumper that way it's got support and it's not just hanging there breaking off on just a weld seam here so we'll just keep it going and keep doing what we're doing. flush is not working out I can't really put a clamp and get what I need to so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the bumper off finish welding out the bumper the other thing is on the bottom side of the bumper it's gonna get tabs that tie into the bumper and bolt to the bottom of the frame uh, but I'll go ahead and measure that because I have to do the bottom weld on the bumper first grind it and then put the plate on there and I'll measure what I need as far as those go for the underneath and uh, pre-drill the holes so that way it's all good to go but at this point I'm going to go ahead because this is more cosmetic and go ahead and weld out everything and keep this party going. So I've got the rear bumper painted, everything's ready to go. The only thing left now is bolted up on the Jeep and there's two holes I need to drill on the bottom side of the chassis uh, on the plates I added on here. So other than that, bolt it on there, drill a couple holes and this thing, this project is ready to go. So let's get to it.
All right, everyone, so we've got everything bolted up, everything in place. Bumper looks good on here. I like the look of it. I like the way everything came out. So we are ready to move on to the next step of this project. I really enjoyed building this and always love coming up with new ideas and new ways to make things work. So I hope you guys enjoyed the show, the episode. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, and let's keep this party rolling. Till next time.